Throw Gang, we are joined by the Fuzzy Wuzzy was a lair. Fuzzy Wuzzy only wore rare. Lauren Schlossman and myself, the easy, dreezy, beautiful cover boy. <laughs> <laughs> James Harris, <laughs> welcome to the weekly Running of the Boys yes. with today's full episode only available on patreon.com slash throwing the fits. Before we get into losing a few legends, yeah, the worst podcast episode we have ever recorded that you will never hear. We'll see. And <laughs> jumping through hoops to buy an anniversary gift. Let's get into a fit check. Yeah, dude. Why don't you start us off, broski? All right. Up on the rooftop, I was wearing, honestly, one, maybe one of the last rooftop fit picks we will ever take. That's right. The boys are relocating. I signed a lease. I signed our lease last week. Mm -hmm. um, it's right here. They gave me a folder. Oh, cool. Which I then like, so you know it's official? Which I, then was like, <laughs> which I then was like, in very TF fashion, yeah. I was like, uh, oh shit, I'm city biking home and I don't have a bag or anything. What did you do? I just stuff it down my ass. <laughs> like fucking. <laughs> well, oh, oh, like a, like a break. Like it was like a felt vertical. Like, felt like Joseph Gordon-Levitt in that bike messenger movie. <laughs> yeah, what is that called? Ru Premium Rush? Premium Rush. <laughs> it's so bad, dude. That's pretty good. Honestly, kind of breaking technology where it's like. He like sees the traffic patterns before they happen, and he like choose. It's like choose your own adventure. It's like crazy taxi in cinema form with a bike messenger, and then he fucking ties Sean Jones's like the subway platforms. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I, that's so funny that that was what you would call a pretty good movie. Yeah, it's like Dream Scenario. <laughs> I got a digital copy. We, we did both enjoy Dream Scenario. You did. Um, my my review pretty good. All right. Uh, okay. Upstairs, I was wearing on the rooftop for one of the last maybe boys only fit picks of all time. I think we got a few left in us. Yeah. Uh, here you big onk leather woven slippers. Um, we are in fake spring number two. Yep. So bust those out early. Then I'm wearing some, I believe, anonymousism oatmeal socks. Then I got my favorite fucking trousers from Maiden Name who got so much shine on yeah, last baby. week's episode. Deservedly so. Deservedly so. Um, these are the Emily trousers. Fucking love them. These are a three season trow for show. The undershirt is Fantasy Explosion. Mm -hmm. Shout out Kevin. Shout out God. Kev. Um, this little fucking number is Roa. Great piece. Apparel. Mm -hmm. Gorp 2.0. You might have seen it on a fucking IG reel put up by your boys. <laughs> At what point are we in Gorp 3.0? I don't know. When does that kick in? When does that upgrade kick in? Next year. <laughs> well, we need to buy more shit. Um, yeah, but I did a little closet purge, you know, hoping to, uh, one, get rid of like... I have too many pants, bro. And then mm -hmm. uh, just prep for spring. And also, you know, I hopefully, the, or not hopefully, the Throwing Fits Friends and Family Bazaar is coming up at some point this year. Fingers crossed. So I got Inshallah. fucking, the second bedroom is now packed full of just garbage bags Wait, of clothes so I want to sell. In terms of categories, you're most over-indexed on pants? That's a surprise. I'm not one. sure. I'm not sure because I have, I literally have bins on bins on bins. Of, of pants or of who, who knows what? This, this past weekend when it was like raining all day Saturday, I was like, I need to do pants. I need to do knits. At the last Friends and Family Bazaar, what was the category that you had the most of? I guess tees aside, because like I just had like a tee box and I was like, whatever. Uh, Mine was kind of like, what was yours? Jeans. Oh, really? So many fucking pairs of jeans, dude. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I was never a big, because you were a big like 501 collector. Yeah. I have like, like two pairs that I'm like going to keep forever. Yeah. And it's funny because like when it comes to like how many pairs of 501s does a guy need? And it's like, I kind of like that's me thinking of what my wife says. The answer is <laughs> two. Right. Because it's like, of course, you have your favorite pairs that are going to be, you know, your first round draft choice. But yeah, I had so many that I'm like, I'm never wearing. I know. These. Or they like don't fit. Yeah. So it's like, what am I doing? This year, it's going to be that for you, but uh, with leather jackets. Dude. So many. Well, I don't want to sell any of them, dude. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I love them all. Yes, you do. I love Ooh, the idea of a man in leather. But your favorite one is coming up soon. Uh, okay. What? You I'm know what thinking I'm about. about what my Oh, you're right, brother. Mm, yeah. You're right. Yeah. When he's, I'm right. He's right. When I'm right, I'm so right. We've said too much as per usual. But no, I just have like, I keep buying like <laughs> bins that are too small. Because I don't know what 96 quarts looks like, you know? In terms of fabric. In terms of volume? <laughs> yeah. No, so so I'm like stuffing like jackets and shit and a bin fits like four jackets. Anyway. No spoilers. You literally um, got another pair of pants just yeah. today. <laughs> I've been a reckless shopper. I've been I've been uh, real, really irresponsible. I bought some a ridiculous fucking vintage Oakley hat. Um, What's the psych psychological motivation of this copping spree? You know what it is? Is that we're finally, not finally, we have been potting with... Real Johns enthusiast, right. Jesse Hudnut. 
uh, next week. Beep. Um, yeah, we'll go behind. We'll tell you behind the paywall. But like their enthusiasm and their knowledge, I think, is like re sparked. Mm. And this happens to me all the time. Where I'll go through like a, a malaise or like a valley of like no copying. Where I'm just like, ah, well, I don't even find happiness in this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what's the point? Yeah, what's the fucking point? What yeah. am I doing here? Um, and then you get in the in the room with a real copper, like <laughs> like <laughs> Sir Hudnut, and you go from mud butt to Hudnut, and you're like, yo, I am excited again. Fake John's enthusiast like, when a real copper comes through. Yeah, and and, pulls and, up. and I'm not gonna lie, like the John's channel in the Discord is like another uh, place forum where you just see people like getting real excited. Shout out the one guy that um, speaking of the hear you sandals that i had on he bought the fisherman mules that i was rocking all last summer and will be wearing again this summer and he's like yo these are fucking gas and so like i think the enthusiasm as we always say is contagious and i've caught the bug once again from hud nut and beep um so i just been going crazy crazy crazy. i bought like some you know more more our legacy uh i got shit at the tailor i got to pick up are you returning Um, a lot of this stuff i had to return I wanted some tank tops for the summer, but I had to return them because they weren't like they were like form fitting. Oh, okay. And I, nobody wants that men's shapewear. No, they were like <laughs> from a brand that we know and love. I'm not going to say their name, but uh, they weren't. They were like function undershirts. But you went like true to size, and it just didn't work. I went oversized. Oh. I, I went fucking large. I went XL because I wanted them to be like hanging a little bit. Mm-hmm. But they were like the you know the type to like go down to your ass. They like real real hug shit, mm-hmm. real huggers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Roa. Like I said, and a fancy loose like I said. That is uh, a loose butthole gauge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love oh. it. Oh, and then the jacket um, right here. I love this Love this piece. Little I don't guy. wear it enough. Dries Van Noten. I've heard of him. Yeah. Um, the story behind this jacket is, you know, this is back when, like, Grailed wasn't just people, like, trying to fucking make a living off, like, <laughs> buying shit and 10Xing it on mm-hmm. Grailed. It's where, again, real coppers both sold and bought. Um, so a lot of people were like, not necessarily trying to like profit, but they were still, you know, trying to offload good shit to other real coppers at fair prices at fair at reasonably fair prices. Fair-ish. This was like still a bit. Of, and Dries is kind of like, I mean, we're going to talk about it, but uh, this jacket, um, I started my job at Def Jam, mm. right? My f- second day, they're like, yo, you got to go to LA and go film this shit with YG. I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> it was, they're like, it's two days, whatever. I'm like, all right, sure. Whatever. It turned into like nine days. <laughs> It usually does, right? We're like, YG didn't know what was happening. Uh, the director wasn't based in LA, and he was like literally boarding his flight when YG finally like showed up like three days later. <laughs> so they're like, yo, you got to come back. That's He's like, the, I'm on the plane. That's the craziest rapper time. He was late by 72 hours. Yeah. <laughs> and um, shout out to NCB, who was my boss at the time. I was like just complaining, and he's like, in in a very nice way, he's like, yo, what'll take you to shut up? <laughs> You're like a new jaunt. I was like, bro, I need a, I'm not getting paid enough for this. Uh, I'm like, I don't have any clothes. Like, I'm staying. I'm like, this is real naive of me, but I felt guilty of continuing to renew my um, hotel stay on the company card. Or the You're company there to dime. do work. You're waiting around for YG. I know. So I was staying with my friend and like crashing on his couch. Because oh. I was like, oh, I, I, I don't want to my first week, like Abuse. spend $10,000. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even have a card. It was like I needed to like call NCB to like run the plastic over the phone. Hey, Dad. Yeah, I need another night at the plaza. Yeah, I was like, I was still going through like the sexual harassment training or whatever. Um, <laughs> NCB, so the father. Little he, home alone. Two he's joke. like, he's like, look, like, let me and look, the money, the music industry is a wash in money, and he's like, I got to spend my fucking, like, I'm encouraged to spend my com- to use my company cards, like, like your per diem. Not even per diem, but he's just like, I, I've been told that that's like a big perk of the job. Like, let, cause he was new to the job too, new to the industry um, on the label side. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm kind of eyeing this Dries jacket. You know, it's a, it's a little, it's a, little, uh, it's a sexy little. <laughs> I need it for work. <laughs> yeah, it's a little like $400 number, um, which, you know, $400, a lot of money at the time. Yeah. 2017, it's 2018. Still is. Still is. Economy be damned. Um, but yeah, so I got the jacket and I put in the work and to me, it's always been like, not only is it a beautiful jacket that I think is indicative of like this very certain micro era of dreams that I like with the florals and the patterns, not the florals, the patterns yeah, and kind of this like mishmash that isn't too like gaudy and bright. It's not like Alessandra uh, Michelle, but like a master, uh, Gucci, Dries, like a master of power clashing, honestly. Yeah. Um, and like I have a sh- I have a silk shirt that uses this pa- that has this pattern. You had the whole set. I, I have you, the shorts too. Yeah. We'll talk about it. 
Um, but anyway, this is a little like uh, kind of like nice little I don't know token of like that fun little so, time so at Def wait, Jam. Exp- so you used company money to buy the John? Somebody else used company money to buy the John for me. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, fuck, that's a perk. They asked me what I do and who I do it for. Statue of Limitations is over. Um, then I was wearing Bottega sunglasses. I forgot to put on my jewels, but yeah. What are you wearing? I wore... Oh, and Haynes boxers, sipping on Diet Pepsi and Greenpoint's Finest. I wore our legacy Cuban heel boots. I have on Thready socks. The jeans are JW... Are up? No. Uh, uh, ish. Okay. Not really. Um, I wore... Because that boot is more of like a, a mid-cut, so I didn't need the... I didn't. I didn't need to jack them up if it was a cowboy boot. Um, the jeans are J W Anderson APC. The T is our Legacy Workshop. The fuzzy wuzzy cardigan is Stussy. The hat is Three S Wife. Rolly on the Three S Wife. Uh, that's a wife. No. Yeah, I'm a wife guy. <laughs> Honestly, I am. Um, Rolly on the wrist. Wedding ring on the fingy. Wifey on the pinky. Mm. Chrome on the other hand. I have my own hydro flask full of green points finest as always. And what are you and... packing in the in the lippy? Well, in the trousers, I'm packing Supreme Hanes oh. and then uh, six milli Zin peppermint gum pilly as per usual. Mm. Top shelf. Nice. All right, let's on, get the, uh, on the non camera side. Yeah, and the earring. Where did we go to get our ears pierced? Like American girl or something? <laughs> <laughs> the American <laughs> girl store to get our what ears pierced? Um, well, I got my shit elsewhere, but I don't know. Like, what? New fuck? York adorned. <laughs> there it is. Wow. Fuck those people. Damn. Well, I, I had a great Me. experience. You yeah. Could, yeah, we you talk about time. piercing so much on the after. So oh, if true. you're into body mod talk, stay tuned this week. Yeah. It gets a little zesty. <laughs> Super right. fucking seasoned. Um, let's get into the meat and potatoes. First up, big news rippling throughout the industry that broke the day we potted last week. Mm. Dries Van Noten is stepping down from his eponymous namesake brand that he was at for 37, 38 years. 38. 38. Crazy. With a wonderful little note. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. Give the man his literal flowers because he is a gardener. Uh, I was not surprised at the massive outpouring of sadness from all of the stands. But at the same time, it was a little like, it was a little like yo, everyone relax. He's not dead. Yeah. And then also at the same time, I'm like, where's been this energy when this guy, because Drees has always been a guy. And I do feel a little bit guilty that he got some, he's gotten direct shots on this pod before and some strays here and there. Luckily we had Jesse to kind of well, like set the record straight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I okay. think that yes, there's been, I, I've, I've been more of a Dries's back guy than anything yeah, else. But to be back, he had to kind of get, you know, shit. Yeah, on but, is it you. Stra- but is it a stray? If you're like, Oh, I haven't enjoyed the past few years. Yeah. And I guess my thing is that I've always thought of Dries as a guy who's been consistent. We're talking 38 years here, years here, but the ebbing and flowing of the, uh, relevance. He, you know, he's a, he's a peaks and valleys guy, in my opinion. Well, so there's him, right, where he's operating at this level, and then the the trend zeitgeist right. line is kind of like ebbing and flowing, peaking and valleying, like you said, and so it coincides with what he's doing, but that's not his fault if he's no. not in sync with, like, where shit is at. For sure. Right? If we're at, like, logo mania or minimalism or quiet luxury, yeah. that's not Dries. That's not his fault, necessarily. If anything, that's his... Consistency? That's, uh, that's like, uh, you got to give him, again, kudos to that man for just like doing what he does and not fucking trend chasing. No, never never chase the trend. Uh, if anything, has definitely been ahead of the curve uh, when you talk about those peaks or like setting the trends. Uh, he is, when you think of the Antwerp six, right? Like I could probably only- how many of, are there? How many of them are there? Oh, fuck. I always forget. I think it's- There's 19 of them. Yeah, I think it's like 12. But no, I can name, you got Dries Van Noen. Mm-hmm. You got- and Emil Meester. Hmm? You got Walter Van Bierendonk. <laughs> the, you the got goat. Dirk Bickenberg. Yep. You got another Dirk guy who I can't re- recall his last name. And then there's uh, a woman named Anne. Anne Yee. Anne Yee. Some shit like that. Um, but, okay. Here's what's really <laughs> interesting. Asked. When you think of the Antwerp Six, and this is, again, credit to Dries. I would say that of the Antwerp Six, who's been the most visible of that, like, prodigal oh. group of students... Like it's him, it's him and Andy, and these are all great designers. And obviously, a lot of people also like use Margella as like a Mart Margella as like a an adjacent to the Antwerp Six, even though he was a bit older. And I think he was already at the Supreme Collaborator. Yeah, yeah. yo, it's good. I ca- I fuck with it. What are you dude. gonna buy? I'm not gonna buy anything, all but right. I do think they did a good job. You gonna buy their seat wallet? 
<laughs> no, but that's like an iconic Margiela piece that if you want to yeah. buy the dollar bill, well, the dollar bill on grilled, is. grilled, grilled, fuck, <laughs> G- grilled, pilled. Um, it's like fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, but um, so outside of Margiela, who like really has been more influential than I think anyone else, Antwerp Six or Antwerp Six adjacent. I'm thinking that Dries and then Anne kind of like pulling in second. He really was the guy from that group that is like talked about as the what most influential like group of fashion students of the past how many decades yeah uh what so steven from so many book club had a good tweet where he's like the reason why you don't see any drees knockoff shit or what <laughs> why people can't knock off drees is because it's so singular in that it's not like a <clears throat> a product that he's put out there and is like so replicable right it's, it's a t-shirt like or whatever the silhouette it's the fabric. patterns it's the fabric it's the uh the even way everything, it's all put together even such artisanal a way. like embro- embroidery and shit like yeah, he yeah. was doing that before anyone using but, like artisans from around the world but like you can't think of you can't say drees and it, it, for everyone it kind of conjures up a different like little micro moment mm. where for me it's like it's again this like it's literally like the color, the color combination, so good, and the pattern clashing here. For others, I'm sure there's like so many other, uh, yeah, like in all the in all the eulogies where it's like, yo, this man didn't die, it's <laughs> right? Like, yeah, yeah. And I think we said in the or I said in the Jesse Hutton pod where it's like, let this man retire. Like, yeah. <laughs> you honestly called your own shot. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Dries. Yeah, um, especially it's like, yo, let this like, uh, <laughs> just let this man go. Yeah, and I mean, for me, I love the the. I was actually looking this up because I wanted to get it right, but the Dries stock you can rent for like three bucks on 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 Prime, and I'm definitely gonna watch it tonight. I probably should have watched it before we talked about him on the show, but I've seen it before. Um, yo, he's a beautiful man with a beautiful mind. And it's like, yeah, let him retire to the chateau and do his gardening. So the gardening thing, and and I think like the timelessness of him is like, I don't think that he operates and he's one of the, I have to imagine one of the few people that has attained that level of success that operates kind of outside like the hype cycle, hype machine. Mm -hmm. Not that's not even hype. It's like business driven at this point, right? Where he's not part of the duopoly of LVMH caring with which Jesse Hunt had talked about. Uh, Puig, 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 yeah. Sounds like they really let him kind of just like operate as he as he did, and as a gardener, someone who like literally operates in seasons yeah. and like <laughs> not right. even seasons, but like you know <laughs> what you plant in in March comes to fruition in July. This man has a different perspective of time. Where what it's a, like what a metaphor, dude. Yeah, Perfect. where it's not even where it's not even like uh, oh we gotta what's gonna sell resort? What's gonna sell pre spring? What's yeah, gonna yeah. sell uh, pre fall? Like what's gonna f- fall winter? What are the trends? How do we merchandise this? How do we sell? What are the big moments? It's like you know. So I think that that's kind of spoken to or, or a big reason why the shit has always been like singular. Yeah, itself and nothing never too crazy. Nope, never not enough wearable. Super wearable, never too expensive in the grand scheme of like fashion. Oh, it's all relative for sure. I yeah. mean, someone like me, like I've been like there, there was a Dree shirt from this season or like the I think the spring. This is a I think it's a spring piece, spring summer. Something uh, a shirt from the same collection, which again has this little panel here as like the main motif. Um, that was my first grail. Damn. And you know, I first saw wearing similar shirts from the same season was Chris Wallace. Oh shit. Yeah. Fucking yeah. one of the most stylish, like real guys that we always mm-hmm. talk about. Um, who's like personifies like elegance, timelessness, kind of like masculine ruggedness, a little trepidness, bit. boldness. Yeah. Like kind of does his own thing. Uh, doesn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my first grails and I staked it out on grilled mm-hmm. and grilled <laughs> for mad long. And finally, finally was able to find one for like uh two, I don't know, some like a very attainable price for sure. Cause again, this is never going to be like the shit that pops crazy with the numbers. No, the one Dries thing that did go crazy price wise. I haven't been able to get my hands on is the, uh, and I feel so ridiculous saying this as a grown ass man, <laughs> but the, um, the rhinestone suit they, he, that he did with Stussy. Yeah. I want that so bad. Wait, st- wait, Stussy? Yeah. There's a Dree Stussy. Did I miss that? Yeah, bro. The fucking oh, eight you're ball, right. You're, that was recently. Yeah. Yeah. That like was crazy. Two years ago? Two years ago? Yeah, because oh, Hugo, exactly yeah, 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 yeah. Hugo was wearing the jeans um, before it came out when he was still at Stussy. Yeah. Another point, and it's funny you mentioned Stussy, that like I think about Dries that I feel like not a lot of people talked about, but like as such a big, bold name in fashion in this you know way that he's revered as this like singular specific thinker who often is outside of the box like we're talking about with trends or whatever Dries has always been and this is my perception and I think people would agree he's been menswear first and 
it's not like I'm about to be like, well, because men are overlooked or anything like that. But within fashion, to have a designer who began his career as a menswear designer many moons ago, um, as a young fucking graduate from fucking whatever fashion school in Antwerp. Young, young dumb and full of Belgian cum. Belgian waffles. <laughs> yeah. Syri- what did that Belgian waffle they put syrup on shit? What? They put syrup on a Belgian waffle? I think so. In Belgium, though, not like what we do here. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he's been a guy that is a name. Is a face, big bold fucking letters in capital F fashion. A menswear first guy, and obviously he has many uh, a female acolyte or anyone that that uh, is a fan of his women's wear. And I just think that that's that's interesting. That, and I think why he's appealed to me as a guy who primarily is looking for wearable menswear, nothing too big brained, too crazy. Even though I can respect that, Dries has been a menswear guy for. 38 years yeah and that it's cool i think it's interesting that the last show will be um whatever ss 25 yeah and that will be a menswear kind of grand finale for him yeah start collecting your start collecting your fucking trees now people um the last trees i cop was from mohawk general store which for a long time was until Dries opened up a shop in la i think was one of the biggest Dries accounts in the u.s wow uh and surprise i bought the I wore them to Gian and Janice's wedding, the sequined uh, oh, tuxedo pants. Hell yeah. Which, oh, those are Dries. Again, those are like, it's a loud, fun piece, but it's not like crazy. No. It's not like screaming in your face. It's just, but I'm, I'm going to wear those like every single New Year's for the rest of my life. Right. Until I get fat and can't fit in them anymore. My only Dries, next year. My only Dries cop ever was also a pair of pants. And I, I kind of got Dries pilled at Grailed because he was on this run of like from like 2014 to let's call like 2018, where like he was putting out like important collections where the way that we viewed it at Grail was like, these are future grails that, and this is happening in future real grails. Yeah. They're happening in the moment. And we were collecting whether it was like the, that bondage collection, the super regal shit he put out all that tie dye stuff that went crazy. Like these really amazing shows with wearable next level pieces that we were collecting in, in real time. And it's kind of like, almost like be the perfect example of why Dries is great. I remember in 2015, um, as I'm like getting Dries pilled uh, based on like where I'm working and, and and with all the other enthusiastic John's enthusiasts that I was surrounding myself with um, in those early days um, at grell.com, uh, athleisure was like starting to happen. And while I, and I'm sure you, we like, we never really wore athleisure. And this is when it was more kind of like trickling down and wouldn't hit the mainstream. For you weren't a, a joggersman, but like he did, a, I bought this pair of like wool trousers that had like the elastic waistband like La Mer and a lot of people were doing that where it's like you know it's comfy but it's not like some bullshit that you'd wear to yoga and it was like this heavy um wool black trouser with the one Dries kind of big brain detail where these like zips in the back that went up like mid calf so you could like totally fuck with the silhouette depending on the shoes you could like make them flared you could have them fully open in the wind you could have them completely locked down and i just remember being like I, i'm like i was like getting it in real time mm. like why he was so significant and why we were spending Calves a out, lot baby. of our fucking archive budget on those pieces that were not even it was like last season we're like this is gonna be a thing yeah get it now let's hold on to this shit we're feeling very bullish on dvn yeah i bought a uh a Dries tie recently it's just like a beige tie with like i think navy polka dots um i i tried to buy these shorts that the size was fucking crazy off Essence. Like, I mean, I think Essence has done a better job at their sizing charts recently, but there's a moment there where it's like size small, uh, 28 inch waist, size medium, 36 inch waist. You're like, what the fuck? Size XL. What's going on here? Size XL, 29 inch waist. You're like, what? I, I can't do this. Even with even with these, actually, with the Emily yeah. trousers, I had to return a pair because I was like, yo, I bought them based on your size chart, and they're so it's so fucking Something wrong. must be in the poutine up there, dude. Yeah. Shit is getting spiked. Uh, Shout out Essence. This is my. Next, this is my current wow. Dries Grail. Bro. I always have like a Dries Grail. This is on sale. Yeah, but I'm not going to buy that. That's still too much money. That's um, a banger. I know, it's good. James it's is good. showing me a very textured leather uh, it's trench like a, car coat. It's like a vinyl or something. Okay, it's it's like um, leather. What's uh, What would you, what would it have to, like how far would it have to drop for you to buy that? Ugh, a lot more than this. How many, uh, what's the crinkled, size run? Crinkled vinyl coat. Um, only a few left in black. There's also kind of like a poopy brown one. Damn, that might even you might have showed your hand a bit because I wonder if people are gonna now like track this down. But this That's is fine. kind of low key already a steal. I, uh, you, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't. I mean, look, I am not smart when it comes to buying clothes. <laughs> like I should just save my money for like the big 
things, but I always end up just buying like a few medium things, which always add up to like more than the actual big thing, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm regretting selling those trousers. I mean, I don't know if I would wear them like how I kind of dress in this day and age, but like, um, I don't, I got street styled in them by, um, what's that guy? AKS Adam Katz. I have an amazing, it's all on my Instagram. If you guys want to go back to 20, <laughs> 15 yeah let's um, do that but uh nah dude what a fucking what a guy dude I, and he'll be missed obviously and i'm Wait, really Dries? curious to see who yeah who will take over it, I, it, i'm not that anyone wants my opinion it should just be the design team that's yeah. like it, i don't know why we need like there doesn't need to be a name the name is already there and just let let the people that have been working with him that he hired like let them cook they know the codes they get it like you know, someone shouldn't come in and feel pressured to just like reinvent the wheel that will ultimately be wobbly and not as good as just what is already there in the DNA of the the people that work at this brand. I also wonder how many like bold face names want to come into a brand that is another guy's name. Big you know? shoes to fill. Well, I yeah. mean, if it's here's the poopy brown one. Fire. Um, See, that for me is the one cheaper. A little bit. Oh, uh, it looks so good with shorts. Yo, honestly, Essence Styling is on point with this. That's a good fit. I know. Dude. No, and the 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 dude that styled this, um, I saw, I saw like I maybe an, like an IG really got searched me or something. He's like rating his he's rating his fits that he styled in Essence. And I was like, bro, give yourself a higher score for this one. This is gas. <laughs> this is really good. That's Dree's a, shorts a great fit. Dree's shorts has always been kind of a weak spot for me too. I have like the matching. Uh, I've never worn them together, but like the matching silk shorts with uh, the shirt I mentioned, and then yeah, like. He's been doing like big ass shorts recently, um, which again I tried on. There was like a, it was like a stripy material that was kind of similar to like a boxer short. Okay, and in the, in like a similar fabric, like a light, light, light cotton. And again, I wish I could fucking make it happen, but they were only the size medium was a fucking twenty inch, twenty eight inch waist or whatever. Yeah, it was fuck, it was fucked. Those size charts are are fucking with your mentals. Uh, yeah. I would love to see you in the Dries set. Looking like Carl from Summer House, but like at the, <laughs> but at the highest, most like elite taste level. I hate a set, bro. I don't wear. I've worn no. sets before. If I wore I a will set, never wear a set again. If I wore, a, if I wore the Dree set, you can, uh, you can uh, go Lindsay Hubbard style and be like, "Are you on drugs? What are you on? The, what uh, are you on? Are you on something?" <laughs> the the, the Dree's romp him, dude. <laughs> Just like, well, you wore sets. I I wore sets on my honeymoon. That's the last time I wore sets, and I'll never do it again. Okay. Wow. I, it was regrettable. Yeah, I don't know. It felt it felt fun and festive at the time during the Super Bowl fit picks, I believe I called it. But uh, yeah, but it's all there. I'm, I'm not. not I'm, I'm not, not saying I'm not deleting. I'm not saying anything because, yeah. as we know, you are the mean one. It is not me. <laughs> um, all right, all right. Another legend was lost, and I'll let you take the lead on this one oh. because you're a fucking suit guy. Yeah. R.I.P. You're never bitch to Martin Greenfield. Oh come and on! You have to. You have to. It's the bit, bro. It's the forever bit. Well, I took Dolores O'Riordan off that list. I didn't give her the... Yeah, because you had to put her on your dude board, bro. I mean, dude, she's she's a goat. Um, Martin Greenfield. I remember when Made in USA and Americana was at its fever pitch. The like, last Taylor in America. I Just seeing so much press with this guy and always being like, just like really blown away with how much he gave a shit about stuff that seemingly only like a handful of bloggers did, which is I was gonna say that's jobs are like American artisans and keeping jobs, keeping our jobs domestically. I thought you were gonna say that giving a shit was such a foreign concept to you. They're just no, like, whoa, no. what is this guy on? No, giving a shit about the made in the USA thing, which uh, unfortunately got bastardized right as a marketing term. But yeah, but I don't think he was into the made in the USA thing for other reasons no. that like brands bastardize that for or Not for fucking Trumpies bastardize. He was like, yeah, I want control yeah. over <laughs> over the shit. Yeah. Um, and he's pro union because he's a nice Jewish boy. When uh, he was, I think, at that peak of relevance, relevancy, excuse me, um, I couldn't afford anything. Like I would have loved to have gone and gotten a suit tailored by Martin. But for me, it was like, I knew him for doing all the band of outsider stuff, like whatever Kanye suit is wearing, he's wearing on the cover of like 808s and heartbreaks. And by the time I could kind of like afford suiting that era had kind of passed me by, or I had passed that era by, if you will, and was more interested in like Neapolitan, like soft shoulder wearing Italian sets, suiting. wearing sets <laughs> in a, <laughs> at, a set by another name sets at Palazzo's. Yeah. And, uh, I ne so I never owned anything, but he, what I didn't realize until reading Gallagher's piece, um, uh, in the Wall Street Journal. Forget about being a Holocaust survivor. Forget about forgetting about the crazy is, yeah. story of how he learned to sew. It's like biopic material, by the yeah. way. I didn't know that. Uh, I mean, this guy was fucking his story's swag. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Truly being. Uh, yeah. Being separated from his family. 
all of them dying, him learning to sew by stealing a Nazi shirt. Yeah. And and realizing that wearing the shirt gave him like power and access. Yeah. Uh, which is, yo, first uh, Holocaust camp guy to get a fit off. Bro, I'm not getting involved with this. I'm not touching this one, dog. Dude. But but it's crazy in the article. Swaggy um, striped pajamas. And shout out to Gallagher, because I would have known this otherwise. Yeah, the first pinstripes. <laughs> yeah. Um was that every Sorry for being my striped pajamas? I just got off the PJ. <laughs> <laughs> every viral suit, whether it's Obama viral in suit. the tan the tan joint yeah. or the uh Joaquin Phoenix Joker three piece. Uh so which that was kind of a bummer when it's like that, yeah, that's probably will go down as his most recognizable piece of work. It's like, oh, but like that, <laughs> like it's a cool look and say what you want about uh, the movie or whatever. Cause I'm not, you're, I'm not a, I'm not a Todd Phillips Joker apologist. Do you think, uh, um, so the news came out that in yeah. Joker, they're going to do covers like 15, like jukebox bangers. Do you think one of them is going to be creep? Cause that'd be fire. Uh, the best use of creep in cinema is that is, there's a cover version that is in the social network trailer. Yeah, by the choir. All fucking time, dude. But you don't want him and no, Gaga. They're all going to be like old timey bullshits. You Not want him and Gaga to fucking uh, that, start singing some. There is no way that that's good. I'm calling it now. I will see it in the theaters. I will pay the money. I'll pay the man. That's going to suck dick. Okay. I'm not a musical guy by any. If it's not Sing Street. You're white, though. You love La La Land. I, I actually really don't like La La Land. You white though. So that doesn't mean you that I white though. You white though. Uh, yeah, I am. I I can't lie. I am white <laughs> though. Uh, but it was. It's crazy to think that. Uh, yeah, th this guy has had a direct, Marty. Marty has had a direct hand in the, the like the most iconic suits that you know. You you see these things and they you know uh, become lightning rods for whatever culture war or not and it's like yeah they all came from this guy yeah the best the best to do it I and he's fucking bar. like died on the job basically like that's crazy no he was in a nursing home for like a little bit oh really um, for like a month the biggest bar was he was like uh or in the hospital the biggest bar was he was like he designed suits for some like fucking mobster in the 40s and then designed suits for whatever fucking actor played that mobster in Boardwalk Empire. Wow. Oh, shit. Right. He did all the, the like, they did all the Lucky suits. Lucky Luciano. And he's like, yeah, he wanted big pockets, big hidden pockets. Fucking call when he me walked in the room, When he walked to the room, you knew he was the boss. <laughs> Which I thought that you would be up here crying like, uh, no. like you're like, like Drake got dissed or something. <laughs> um, Bum. Cause like, <laughs> uh huh? Bum. Cause, uh, <laughs> I thought that you were like a Boardwalk Empire ass motherfucker. Where you, you I were watched just, the whole you series. And your, you and your menswear posse were just dressing like fucking eh, wise guy. She never. I've never owned a three piece suit, mm. which I feel like is the you had to have the waistcoat. What about a fob chain? The only fobs I know were the Chinese kids <laughs> my high school. Yeah, okay, that's why you asked so you could say that. No, but um, I'm, I'm assuming you had a fucking fob. No, did he? He didn't do any Peaky Blinders, right? Martin didn't peaky do that. Fucking blinders. It wasn't mentioned the obits. Yeah, what a guy. What a fucking legend. I think... Uh, Pro union. Right. Yes. He, he stood on business for the right fucking shit. He made amazing fucking garments. Uh, a true fucking one of the, artisanal uh, master of tailoring. One of the machines that counted the number of, of buttonholes that had it had um, opened, I think was at like 3 million. That's some crazy. Some well, like you got that. four buttons per cuff. Yeah. You know, then you got a couple on the pants. But still, that's a lot of fucking suits. A lot of buttons. Yeah. the It's a loss. A lot of it's, butt it's tough. Because like... Yeah, I mean, Gallagher also notes at this point where it's like the suit makers left in America. Like, where, what, is he, what does he say? There's fucking 10? Call me a tailor because I got that butt on. <laughs> Stop, dude. I'm trying to be serious here. <laughs> that's, for um, the, that's for the sizzle. No, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a, a rest in peace, peace. No, you dead bitch. Wow, two in two weeks? Yeah. Uh, I'm you got soft, man, I, bro. I, those you got soft. Those band suits, obviously, being like a yay stand and like because band was so fucking... You know, Yo. influential and important at the time. Yo, Larry, are skinny suits back? No. Okay. And that's the thing. Like, <laughs> even when they were still happening, I, again, like I said, I, I had passed that by and went right to the Isaiah sample sale, was more in line with my budge. The Dries tie bot oh, actually slightly skinnier than yeah. uh, the typical, what, a three and a half inch? I don't know. But I What's love the, a fat fucking tie bot. Stop when I stop putting it to three and a half inches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, it's about average. I would say. Oh damn! Where's the fucking? Uh, where's my? You're just measuring here? ties with your erect penis. <laughs> uh, uh, yep, yeah, that's about three and a half. That looks good. That looks, uh, that looks about fucking average. Honestly, it might be. That you might sure be you don't want to. Sure you don't want a skinny, skinny tie, yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fat ties uh, make my neck hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of dickheads, 
Um, <laughs> let's talk about this fucking episode we cut last week that was just oh, here, okay, here a go. tremendous oh. waste of everyone's time. You know, it's not a waste of everyone's time. It's the John Teets pod that will be out tomorrow. Yeah. Phenomenal. Another what a guy. fucking banger. Can't uh, wait. Another one, one will. Another one's that I just Harpooned. didn't want it to end. Yeah. Yeah, we were fucking Ahab up in this bitch. Um, and my guy, Kohog? What's your name? Kehog? You read that book, right? Or you, you don't read books. You've seen the movie. Uh, what's the movie? What's the book? Moby Dick. Herman oh. Melville. Oh, you're talking about who's uh, Ishmael? No, and then there's there's Kehog. Call me Ishmael. I know yeah, that but then, one. But then there's I know the first line. But then there's the Hogman Key. Okay. Uh, Hogman anyway. Key. Anyway, <laughs> sounds um, like a rapper. <laughs> I know John Teets. What a fucking guy. Yeah. Again, another dude that like sparks your interest or like the the flame, the eternal flame burning Stoked. inside him. Stoke. The eternal Stoke. Yeah. So is good. just contagious, and I think that I hope to pass that on to generations. <laughs> That's why we do. What above we do. and below me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> above again, you. <laughs> Call me Taylor because I put that butt on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess that means you put on ass. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. I think you should retire it. Now we've gotten yeah. two out of the way. Okay. Speaking of fucking retiring right. shits and dickheads, um, what a tremendous waste <laughs> of fucking time where it was such a shame because we cut two episodes last week. One was with the god, John Teets. Um, and again, great fucking episode. Couldn't yeah. have asked for a better way to end the week. Yeah. But the beginning of the week started off like a fucking hot, Rocky, stinky turd. Mm, um, so bad. All right. We're not going to name names. This is a blind item. Yeah. We're not going to name names. Uh, that would we're be not going to like, be fucking leading the witness or whatever. I don't know what the legal term is. Sounded good. <laughs> um, this sucked and is, I think, the only episode. Mm -mm. There's one more. But I'll remind you later. But it was from the previous podcast endeavor that shall not be named, I believe. Where someone what? That was a rapper. I'm not going to say any much anymore. No, no, no. But this was mutually from both sides. Oh. Like, yo, dead this. But this is the only, I guess. What? And this is why I think this is so honestly monumental because we've been podcasting since 2016, and this is now one of two pods that, for whatever reason, and the, the reason this is bad is a lot different than the other one was bad. But like. We've had great episodes. We have bad episodes. A lot of the shit is subjective to the listener, subjective to me and you. A lot of it, if not all of it, but is But the idea of a podcast being such fucking dog shit that it ultimately gets trashed when we could always use more content. I mean, it's what we do fucking week in, week out. Like that, just to set this up before James goes into more detail, like that should let you know how terrible horrible of an experience this was yeah uh so like we had you know usually we record uh, one guest episode a week occasionally we'll do a few more be especially for trying to get ahead because we know that we have like a lot of work coming up on other stuff right et cetera, et cetera. or just the opportunity comes in our lap someone's like in town and oh sorry i'm gonna i want to pull i want to pull up uh, a receipt so that we, i want to get are you gonna read it la later yeah okay yeah. um if someone's in town and we got to make it happen and we have enough time heads up great um it the time it worked out that i was doing i worked on sunday because i was sick the week before so we couldn't really get to it so i was working on sunday to finalize run a show do the intro which like takes a lot of brain power waste a fucking sunday doing this um to record with this person on tuesday and one point i will make is that yep. when we worked on the preliminary kind of run of show stuff what we call a brain dump there was a lot that we wanted to talk to this person about like i don't know we were excited we were both excited for this happen th this right? is this is someone Relatively. Let, let's be clear this is someone that while not an a-list celeb is someone that everyone listening at home knows who this person is and would be familiar <laughs> yeah with this think, guy like, we'll say it is a guy yeah, and I was like <coughs> excited and same. Had never met the person you had, and you were like, "Oh, it's gonna be good." Mm -hmm. If they're like, they're gonna give us a lot. They're a yapper. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be like right. kind of zany. Blah blah blah. Um, so I work all day Sunday, or or uh, a, a lot of time on Sunday to make it happen to, to finalize it. Um, so I'm texting with their assistant. So it's someone that has an assistant. <laughs> And they're like, oh, hey, would you mind calling a car? And I'm like, yeah, of course. We always yeah. offer to pay for Ubers for any guests that want to uh, Uber instead of taking the train. Um, so I schedule a car. And then the assistant goes, oh, yo, could you call a Suburban? Because they're going to come with five people. <laughs> I text back. And this is like last minute. The car's already on the way. I think I'd, I booked like a Uber. What's like 
Uber Black? Yeah, Black. Like it was a te- I think it was, you said it was a Tesla, and it, yeah. it was not big enough for the posse. The Which, entourage. honestly, all Teslas should not be Ubers. Like, <laughs> I, I fucking hate riding the Teslas. I don't know how to open the doors. Yeah, it's confusing. The There's no shocks. It fucking sucks. <laughs> um, so they're like, oh, can you call Suburban? We got five people. And due to the nature of how we record in my home, mm-hmm. uh, we can't use the couch, which is right here. Yeah. We only have a f- like we have two chairs back here, but we have to move them. If we- you know, when Benny the Butcher came, like that's one thing. If he like brings a crew, and it's like, yeah, of course we're going to accommodate Benny the Butcher's whole fucking squadron. And we knew ahead of time; it wasn't like a last minute thing that was sprung on us. I was like, yo, I'm sorry, we can't accommodate five other people or four other people in the apartment. He's already running late, by the way. Yeah, an hour late. Uh, but if they want to, um, hang around in the neighborhood, yeah. I hope that's cool. And like, great, no problem. A few minutes later, okay. Good news. They're coming by themselves. Forget the crew. But he still needs a Suburban. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Like, okay. Sure. Big guy. Might yeah. have a lot of shit on. Yeah. Who knows? Might have, like, stuff yeah. with them. I don't know. Whatever. Um, He's in town. He's very naive of me, right? Yeah. So this is the third Uber I call. <laughs> the cancellation fees alone were worth one a full ride. The cancellation <laughs> fees alone were, <laughs> at this point, we're talking $50. And again, the money, no, whatever. It doesn't matter. But it's still, uh, it's the, the Suburban that I finally call takes forever. Pulls up, it's like one hundred twenty dollars. Um, they ring the buzzer. <laughs> There's a little like video screen where you like see the face of whatever. I you know whatever. I just hit enter. Um, I it's it's them, the guest. They walk in, and then I see fucking four people just like stream in behind them. It's like Jesus five fucking people. Christ. Yeah, five people total. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm like <laughs> great. Four. No, five strangers now in my home. Yep. One of whom is like, we actually have time scheduled to like do something with yes. four just fucking hanger random like hanger ons. Well, there was a point where I was like, oh, like you, I think you were in the bathroom or you were helping get chairs set up and I'm just making polite conversation. And I just assumed that these are people that worked with or for him and it's like no we're just like they're just friends and they're just like literally like hanging out and glomming on and again that is fine if that's what this dude wants to do in his own time but like we and this isn't we don't never want someone to come on this pod and to feel like work even though it is our job but i'm like so you guys have no reason at all to be here it's not like again one is the assistant one is i don't know whatever stylist whatever it could be but it's just like literally like there's no reason for you guys to fuck up this entire situation that we are trying to make go as smoothly as possible. Cause yeah. ultimately tens of thousands of people are going to hear it. Tens of thousands. A lot more than that. Um, Especially this episode. Open the door. <laughs> First thing this person goes is, Hey, Oh wow. This place is small. <laughs> I'm like, fuck you, bro. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here's, here's what's weird though, is that they're like very jovial, very happy go lucky. The vibes are high. Everyone thinks that it feels like it's going to be a great episode. Mm-hmm. Right. And admittedly, I think that uh, the questions we put together were a little like not prodding because we never like will make people no. talk about the stuff they don't want to talk about. But it's also just like the stuff we want to talk about with this guy was like related to their work and their life that they put out there and, and his career and the stuff he's been working on in recent projects that you're all familiar with. I will also say that we knew what was quote unquote off limits. And we like, didn't even we're like, we, so that was the thing. It's like, he knows or somebody on his behalf, whatever relayed some stuff that they didn't want to touch on. That's fine. Right. We're not capital J journalists. That's not what we do. We want to have a good conversation. So the fact that like everything, like you're saying, it's not prodding at all. It's stuff that like obviously this person I would assume is prepared to talk about. Dude, so like everyone's friendly. I don't even care necessarily. Like, I, you know, I fucking plaster smile on my face. He goes and takes a fucking gnarly shit. We were having fun on the roof too, taking pictures. He takes a gnarly shit. Uh, one of the random people that show up, they go and t- uh, uh, they go and take a shit, I think, <laughs> or they're spending a long time in the bathroom. I don't know what they were doing there. A double deuce. Um, you know, but it's like, okay, like, I guess just stay. We're going to leave you in my home while we go up on the roof. And like, you just are like in my crib by yourself now, whether you're shitting or whatever the fuck you're doing. Oh, is that something that like, it's because the whole thing was like, we could wait for this person to finish up before we take a picture or we like leave them to their own devices. I didn't even think, and this is rude of me and I want to know, that's very awkward for you to have somebody in here who you don't know when you're not here. Again, I think like host mode kicked in. I'm just like, also it was it was a woman that was taking a shit, so it's like I don't want to make her feel bad necessarily. Yeah. We're just like, yo, finish your fucking shit, yo, bitch. 
<laughs> hey, yo, wipe up. How's that shit going, bitch? Wipe up. <laughs> wipe me down. Um, finish your shit. Pinch it off, bitch. <laughs> Pinch it off. We're going upstairs. <laughs> so it's like, oh, yeah, you could totally stay in here. Like, we'll be right down again. Fucking crazy that that is what our lives, what my life is. Yeah. Um, Hence the office. Okay. Whatever. Vibes are high. We sit down. We start recording. Immediately. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know if it's something you said, if it's the intro, but immediately the guest shuts down, starts getting real defensive, starts like giving one word answers. And yes, maybe they are shy. Could have been a bit as maybe well. A little shy. Could have been a weird bit. But then their bit turns into like just like pathologically lying to us. As a joke. And we're then like, like, oh no, we're, I'm doing this very cool project. We're like, whoa, that's sick. Like, tell us about it. Oh, yeah. Five minutes later. Oh, uh, actually, I'm just kidding. That's yeah. not happening. And we're like, okay, this is great conversation, bro. The, the, the first time it happened, I actually thought it was like, actually, it was set up. And the punchline being like, this thing drops on the 1st of April. Okay, that was kind of funny. But that, from there, it then, yeah, weirdly became like this antagonistic, like, form of lying or not like fucking with us because I think you and I, we can be the butt of a joke. If that's also what makes a good pod, that's great. We'll, we'll put that out there. But it was like this weirdly antagonistic thing where the vibes just fucking plummeted the it second. Like, it was, it was horrendous. <laughs> and like, you know, we, uh, the way that we put together on a show, like you can kind of tell and like the current setup where I'm over here, Lawrence is over there and you have the zoom in front of you. I'll be like, yo, time check. And I'll like, based on, uh, how much based on how much time has gone by and how much is left, it's pretty clear that okay, this is gonna be a two hour pod, this is gonna mm -hmm. be an hour and a half, whatever. We were almost done and it was 45 minutes, and this was us just pulling teeth. Where it's like, yes, that's a perfect, that's exactly what it where was. Where it's like, ask him a question, he's like, um, I don't know what the fuck, like, duh, 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 you're stupid. And it's like, oh, well, see, that's the thing about like, da da da, is that da 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 da, and like literally trying to. We were fishing. Force a conversation mm -hmm. with someone that was just fucking like jabbing us and like being, yeah, just an antagonistic dickhead. Fishing where none of the fish were honestly got nothing. And I will say what was also extremely weird and why I think it was this bit that this person was doing, thinking that it was hitting when it was absolutely completely missing the mark and no one is enjoying themselves is the second we rap, then it goes back to that weird, posy, jovial energy where like he, he was even some of the stuff that he was joking about on the pod that never got exposed as a joke. He was even then being like, Oh, I was just kidding about that. I was just fucking around, whatever. And we're still like hanging and he's, uh, hugging us hugging goodbye. goodbye. He's like, Yo, it's like, when you're was, next time you're like over, like next time I'm in town, I'll hit you. We'll hang out proper. Da -da. But and then to be like, oh, by the way, that stuff I was talking about, like, yeah, that's all bullshit. And we're like, yeah, wait, what? Yeah, like, what, what, so then what is the value? So that's the thing. If you're here and you're doing a bit where every answer to everything is either nothing or if it is something, it's bullshit. Like, who does I, I'm confused about like what is the thought process behind like who do you think wants to hear that? Like and ultimately, we'll talk about kind of the fallout from this. But so they leave and then you and I are just like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. And I think that the plan Completely is befuddled. We still recorded the afters. I think we were still trying to keep again at this point. We're like, all right, like bad episode. I guess we're going to have to put this it out. dude looks bad. Not us necessarily. Yeah. So we're doing our job in the Friday fiasco that comes out this Friday. I think we're going to drop that afters just with a bunch of highly like, redacted names redacted. <laughs> um, you were like you were being like, yo, should we not? put that out uh and i was like bro like we are behind schedule we have some obligations where we need to like obligations keep the content schedule as is and and uh, but and, like that was fucking horrible and <laughs> the nature of the person's celebrity status and this idea of like breaking up a hud nut a hud nut and teats pod where it's like for the heads, which again, like talk about energizing the base, like base. I'm so psyched for these to happen regardless. And they would have come out, but this was going to be the kind of thing in the middle that broke up those two shows, a bit of its own palate cleanser where like ultimately um, no one is by the way, going to miss out on anything no. by not hearing a second of this. You will hear. And in the afters, like, yeah, the the vibes are crazy too. Cause again, we're just like, what, what, like what even we had to sage this apartment with John Teats. Yeah. <laughs> real with hey, some yerba mate he, teeth burn some yerba mate bro yeah it was it was so bizarre um, and and look i think that it was yeah. we were a little like yo what the fuck was that uh okay like our our, our hands kind of forced like it is what it is that happened there's not much we can do about it until a few hours later <laughs> that night 
I think the it was definitively the decision was made for us. Yep. By this individual, where if you want to fucking pull up, uh, we get a text from Max the meme man, um, who kind of also handles the community outreach, aka the DMs. Yep. Um, where he sent a screenshot of like what this person yep sent to us. So we got a DM, uh, and I will read it. What time it, is it? What time is it? Eight oh nine p.m. So we probably wrapped around. F- Four. It's pretty so like four hours later. I think it's pretty clear to me that this person realized um, the same thought we had, which is like this could go out, and uh, this person is just going to look fucking terrible. Yeah, it has nothing to do with us, and I think he realized that. And talk about all you need to know about somebody not taking accountability, projecting, projecting, becoming blaming ex- others, extremely fucking um, defensive. This is the this is the DM in its entirety. Delete the whole episode. Y'all were out of line so many times and downright disgusting. That is blatantly not true no. at all of a single second of recorded history that happened with that man. And that pissed me off. Oh, dude. And then, and then I got angry. Um, and that when I was like, yo, fuck this guy. Yep. Uh, burn this shit. This is never seen the light of day. One, Trash it. He's almost doing us a favor yeah. because it's like, okay, now we don't have to like waste a week and like put out a, a hot steaming pile of garbage to or our waste listeners. The listeners' time, exactly, exactly. Like we don't have to uh, take away from them. Um, but it really it was just like, yo, you didn't show up. Your performance was fucking dick, and you're blaming us and just like again making it up and like again the pathological line continues throwing around really fucking big words too that like like it. That's why I'm like, this is not even remotely what happened. And I understand everyone has their own point of view, (laughs) their own lived experience of what it's like podcasting with us. But I'm like, this is fucking an indictment that is based in no reality whatsoever. Got a text uh, from the assistant, maybe like an hour later, being like, hey, this guest was really uncomfortable the whole time. Wait, can I read that too? Let's get that. Sure. Let's just get it on the record. I mean, I think it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But it's Um, also like... I think it was just like um, the guest was really uncomfortable all the time. They don't want it out. Thanks. Blank did not feel comfortable for the entirety of the episode. He does not want it released. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so no problem. Hit him with a thumbs up. Hit the DM with a thumbs up. That's all you get. Thanks, the pal. Minimum, you fucking dick. Um, and then, OK, so then, you know, the next day I text because we did have a, a mutual who helped homie set this up, set it up. So I texted them. Um, you know, just being like, hey, do you have a second to chat? The fuck? Never going to like try and convince the guests to change their mind. No. Never going to try and convince the guests to like take back what they said about us. And that's an apology would be nice. Yeah. Uh, also, it's like, yo, you realize from the Ubers to the fucking <laughs> uh, insults to the pathological lying, like you were just rude and mean and yeah not chill the whole time what he proje- <laughs> well, again what he was projecting upon us was 100 percent coming clearly from a place of uh what he yeah. clearly like you have downright to- disgusting my brother in christ do you see the <laughs> toilet bowl <laughs> the there is no way that this guy lacks this kind of self-awareness this is just clearly a defensive maneuver that uh seemingly uh as we found out from our mutual might be a uh, part so- of his repertoire so the mutual was like, look, I'm sorry. Like he, the mutual, you know, God bless his soul. Um, and obviously still the homie. They were like, yeah. they were like, yeah, I should have fucking said something. I kind of noticed that they were like wobbling. And like when they get in this place, they can be like really, like really lash out. <laughs> and he told me a story about how this has happened, like in an even more public forum somewhat recently and in even more like, s- like straight up sabotage type manner. Self-sabotage. No. Oh. Self-sabotage and sabotaging Everything around them and like the form that they were in where it's like, yo, some men just want to see the world burn. True. Um, this Joker ass motherfucker, but uh, <clears throat> not Joaquin Joker. No. Uh, Heath, which who did that suit? That was a great suit. You're right. Uh, Purple one with like the hexagon kind of pattern. Like the snake skin or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's a fire fucking. All the snakes. Great skin. Halloween costume. Shout Closet out. throwing a hissy fit. I was about to say shout out Diddy. Do not shout out Diddy. No, no Diddy. <laughs> shout out Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. That's my ditty. Um, <laughs> That's your ditty? Well, ditty pre <laughs> all that shit. <laughs> uh, honestly, the fact that that was probably his reaction to so, man, so much heinous bullshit is I know. pretty fucking disturbing. Yeah. Speaking diddy, of the down Joker. Dis- speaking down or disgusting, ditty. Yeah. Um, where were we? Uh, yeah. It, it basically was like, all right, this person, permanent fucking blacklist. And, you know, I think that while it would have been nice, one of the reasons why it would have been nice to have this person on the pod was it was kind of like, yo, 
And a question was like, hey, you've been kind of keeping it low key since your last big project. After which was like, huge projects. After big projects, like it's been kind of low key. Like, what are you plotting on? Which is a nice way of being like, yo, it's quiet for you out here. And that's kind of a little bit of hindsight 2020 low key. Yes. Well, sure. And I think like as we told the story amongst like, you know, inner circle, a lot of people were like, yeah, this guy's kind of a fucking monster. So it kind of it, it occurred to me that and I'm not saying that I'm not alleging this towards this per individual, but like generally speaking, I think, you know, when you're like a name comes up, and you're like, oh, that person fell off. Oh, it's kind of quiet out here for them. A big reason for that could be <laughs> sure, like the creative juices aren't hitting the fucking Illuminati is conspiring against them. Taking some time off for their mental Taking health some time off. Maybe they uh, the, the moment their moment has passed. The zeitgeist has moved on from them and they're still clinging on or they're trying to like, chase the fucking moment. Um, another reason, and this occurred to me uh, solely from like this experience with this with this person, is that like it's entirely possible that it becomes quiet out here for somebody because they've burned so many bridges mm -hmm. that nobody wants to fucking work with them, and yeah. nobody wants to like enable them or put them on in a way where they can like continue to be relevant. Yeah, your and reputation as a bozo precedes you, and no, we do not want to work with you. And that's great. Like that's a that's a self cleansing ecosystem, right? That's where it's like justice. That's karma. Yes. And in this in the worlds and the circles we run in, where there's little justice, little karma, if any. Yeah. Um. You got to feel good that it may come around to bite them in the ass, and it is it pays off to just be fucking nice to people. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. I mean, we talk a lot about like how to respectfully like reach out to people, and it's about you know again respect and being kind and like that was such a weird. That's why it was such a weird bait and switch where it's like all that stuff was up front and on the back end, but when we were actually doing like the fucking product, when itself, it came to the showdown, when it comes to the showdown. You were a fucking asshole. You are not. You will not. You will not be a nice person. Um, yeah, he was. We went full plain view on our ass, and uh, yeah. I, no one is guy. missing anything. Uh, you will get a highly redacted afters just to kind of see the kind of or hear the or see the shell shockness that we <laughs> kind of had. And I think at one point I go, you said like you alluded to it as an interview, and I think I even say like if you could call it that because yeah. like I it just what makes it made no fucking sense in the moment it made no sense after the fact and uh i think we're doing the right thing by just laying out what happened facts are facts receipts are receipts we do not want to give this person any clout or any reason for we're not trying to mobilize anyone against this guy he's made his own bed it seems like right across the board maybe uh, again that's that's just like a kind of a generalization that uh i think applies could apply. Maybe, 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 maybe. For high probability. Maybe, maybe. It, yeah, it seems like uh, this guy seems like a tough, a tough cookie to work with. But I'm, but I'm like explaining this, like whether I was telling my wife about it because I was in a, such a shitty mood afterwards. I think I even, I think I said it on the show in the teats afterwards, where I was like, I'm, just, I just need to go have like this fucked up. I need to have a drink, dude. I need to drink and I need to eat pizza. I need to eat my drink and eat my feelings because I was so fuck. I was just again, it was a flabbergasted, it was shell shocked. I was like, what? Because in my this few, man drove you to the bottle. <laughs> it, it, he really did. In my few dealings with this person that in the past were pretty superficial, like it was always fucking that jovial, out the gate kind of behavior. Psychopath shit. Uh, yeah. So it's it was just, yeah, I don't think you and I, again, there have been good pods, there have been bad pods. There is never name a bad pod. Right, whatever. I'm just saying there are never Neve, pods where, <laughs> where like, yeah, there are never pods where like this should not see the light of day that doesn't yeah. happen it's such an outlier and that's why it was again crazy to even just like be telling people the story i'm like what the fuck like what happened there? crazy wow. crazy crazy life of two professional podcasters crazy what the fuck are you gonna do this guy is on our shit list right next to whack gargle my balls son well i'll and never have to think about this guy ever again and he doesn't need to become an enemy of the show it's just like he, that he was well, who we thought he was even yeah. though we thought he was better and look, there's a lot of fucking people in our world that like, whether it's kind of like the streetwear sneakers into like pop culture into like whatever, right? Where I'm just like, oh God, I wish I didn't have to fucking apply brain power or brain cells to this person and their work. And guess what? I don't have to do that anymore with this motherfucker. Yeah, true. That's, that's great. Think did, of the positive. Did you unfollow? Do you follow him on Instagram? No. What's funny is he- I don't think so. He, well, actually, he follows you. Oh. Um, which I was, I was like, what the fuck? I'm the one who knows him. He never followed me. Um, I did not unfollow him, but, um, yeah. No. Nope, oh my God. Followed. Oh, and another thing. Oh, and, uh, unfollowed me. I guess if, oh, they, if wow. they did follow me. <laughs> no, no, know. definitely. Cause I checked. Awesome. Great. Okay. No more fucking things that the Great. audience can dig into to try to figure this out. Um, 
Yeah, and then it's like, you know, there was points in the conversation where it was serious and and deep. I, I don't want to pretend or I don't want to make it seem like it was all just like trolling or whatever. But then like when it came to like getting real answers and like continuing down some of those paths, like uh, we took like a huge break and we told him we would edit out the uh, dead air so he could like really think of um, some serious shit that he claimed you want to talk about. And then when we punch back in, it, it, it's almost like a joke to him where then it was just, oh, he had nothing. And it was like, okay, so we're just like sitting around trying to make you look good. But like, you don't even, you won't even take that for it. It was so weird. I would be very happy to just excise those the Sunday yeah, and the Tuesday and the Tuesday night and really the Wednesday morning, just out of my fucking brain and just uh, throw it into the incinerator forever. Um, so let's do that. Let's yeah. never mention this person again because we don't have to. And but, you know, never spi devote, spicy blind item for the yeah, best never friends devote, by the paywall. Never devote any uh, brain power to them. Ew. I, but yeah, but it's my phone, so it's like whatever. Right? I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I had like <laughs> your a phone, though. Yeah, dude. You don't think I fucking clean my phone? Do you want like a... I can get you like a little like Ziploc bag next time for your fucking expended Zins. I think we talked to Teets about this, but I'm also addicted to uh, chugging Celsius before the pod, before any pod, boys only, guest afters, whatever. And I should just keep that can, almost like a dip spit can. I could just put them in there. But so then when you put it in my recycling bin, there's just open Zin pouches okay, in that's the fair. air. Okay, so maybe not. Just, yeah, I could just God, go. To, I can't wait to move I, the office. I could just go to the recycling uh, room that's right over there. Yeah, you know? true. So uh, let's talk about something else. Yeah, please let's talk about anything um, else. Let's talk about how fucked it is to buy luxury jewelry in this country. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, congratulations to you and your betrothed. You are coming up on five years of marriage. Yeah, dude. The you guys 30th made it. Of you March. guys made it. Five years longer than anyone thought. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, you know, you know what I mean. I mean, you know what I mean? Why get married? You know what I mean? Why you know get I mean? married if it's not uh, if it's not the one? If it's here's, not forever love. Here's to five more. Uh, <laughs> at least. Uh, Minimum. So, so five years, that's a big milestone, right? So yeah. it feels like you went um, above and beyond with the anniversary gift this year, although you had to jump through hoops, fucking dance for your supper. Yeah. When I, it comes to buying luxury jewelry in this goddamn motherfucking country. As someone whose wife is a fan of luxury jewelry and has bought um, quite a bit. Um, chrome? No, not Chrome. Okay, but you know, I mean, not Chrome, but the other so, obvious shit. So she doesn't have taste then. No, no she has too much taste <laughs> for my for my fucking wallet. Um, I while I've done this process before, I just went through. I had just jumped through the most hoops of any luxury jewelry purchase of my life. Where most like, recently, yeah, uh, literally, finally secured the bag. No pun intended. This morning, um, ahead of our anniversary on Friday. But it was one of these things where like it's a brand where you can't buy it online. But I called the store and I'm asking, I'm inquiring about a specific product and it's like, okay, well, we don't have any. So do you want to go on? And I'm doing this with, enough, I thought, enough time in advance. I'm not like waiting till the 25th hour to get something okay. or I'm like going to show up empty handed. But you're there, not going Larry mode. No, no, not for this. I'm too, I've, if I right. learned anything in five years, do not go Larry mode. Have, with you ever, have you ever missed an anniversary gift because you went Larry mode and tried to like buy it on anniversary eve i want i mean we've been together for so long there has to have been fuck-ups but not since we've been married i'm too smart for that okay now, this is the big leagues we don't fuck around wait i think that you would want to fuck up before you're married now that you're locked now that you've locked it in it's like there's some wiggle room no mm, maybe I, I see what let's you're not, saying let's not no. let's not take our chances here yeah, exactly because if jenna leaves you you're dead you're playing you're, with fucking you're fire dead man dead schlossman man. dead in the gutter um so this one i call in advance and it's like okay we don't have this thing oh you called uh yeah wow, wow, wow. So call the Taking fucking shit call one of the boutiques in new york they're like all right we don't have the thing i'm like all right well like they're like you want to go on a waiting list i'm like yeah listen brandy melville <laughs> i know I'm, you got them hoops i'm like the waiting list is, is fine and all i'm like i just i have a deadline and they're like okay well like there's different waiting lists because like there's like the prepaid waiting list and there's like the waiting list for like people like you who like you're just a, so i'm like okay i kind of and i understand how the luxury watch market works where it's kind of like sneakers to some degree where you're i was gonna say this sounds very sneakery bro it's like begging a motherfucker to spend a lot of money so luckily for me like the waiting list materializes because there's this there's stock coming in so i'm like okay knowing that like and they're like well we don't you're only on the waiting list of people that want to buy this thing so they're like it might sell out 
this, not on the prepaid. No, not on the prepaid. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, like, ha, can you give me any more information? Like, how much time do I have? Like, I'm trying to fucking, you know, schedule some time to sneak out of the apartment before a pot or whatever, so I can, you know, go uptown and get this thing. And they're like, well, there, there's no guarantees. And Ooh, I'm like, okay, well, uptown. like, so I'm like, okay, well, if I make an appointment uh, for Monday the 25th, they're like, we can't guarantee anything. It's crazy. So I, I fucking, uh, so I make the appointment. I like, there's a section uh, in the appointment, uh, like you can leave a note so i'm like very clear i'm like i have the deadline i need a yeah. specific thing um just, i know what i want to buy just, and i have the money just praying to god that like a human is going to read this and maybe be like okay this guy's not in a bind but like i'm not just buying this shit for it's not shit and giggles bro this is like this is my fucking life this is five years so i show up today and i'm like i'm like he has the notes in front of him he's like so you really had no idea whether or not you're gonna be able to pick so up the gift I or fucking not. show up today and also by the way I'm never going to try to pretend you've called me white many times on this pod already. Um, if you showed up and they didn't have it, we're going to be like, demand your 290 back for the MTA for well, the train ride? Bro, so first and foremost, I'm like, damn, I got to like look presentable. Though I weirdly just wore, I, I don't know how, like, <laughs> let me put on my streetwear card again. Bum, <laughs> bum. Uh, but I, I, I'm so let I'm me like, wear my wife hat so they know I'm a wife guy. <laughs> yeah. So oh yeah, he's a, he's a wife guy. Um, so I go in. And I'm early for the appointment. But don't you, real quick, like with with dressing f up for the fucking gift you want. I wasn't going to wear a suit because then I'm like, I'm going to pod in a suit. But, it, like, but suit months over. Okay. Everyone saw the fit pic. Everyone knows what you wore. We, whoa. What, what was the jacket, by the way? Oh, the jacket is a second it? layer leather. No, I forgot to mention oh. it. Shout That's out to the, the boys. Sorry. The blouson? Yeah. Yeah. It's f so fucking good. Um, doesn't sh sometimes showing up in like a bit of a bummy fit, you're like, yeah, I got mo old yeah. money. Yeah, I got fucking bummy money. <laughs> Yeah, got that, that bum that episode got that title bum, bum bum money bum money bummy bummy money. I think bum money is pretty good. Okay. Um, um, you know, versus like showing up as like a fucking like so like I'm I don't fucking guy not that I'm getting profile, but I'm just like I wonder if because like this is such a touch and ghost purchase apparently that like I'm gonna look like an untouchable and I'm not gonna be able to walk away. I'm not gonna be able to secure the fucking item that I need for my anniversary because by the way, not only is the heat on because of it just being a five year anniversary, but like she already got my thing and is mm. already super stoked and is and it's already in the house um so i'm like a little behind the eight ball even though yeah. again i have till friday we'll probably exchange tonight was well, he so to like clear. uh please we need to get oscar the grouch some service here yeah, right this fucking grouch dude. this guy came all the way from sesame street but i didn't come in he hot. was in a trash can but i sit down the guy pulls up my fucking appointment with my notes pulls up the the you know the, he the information he? he's just in a suit okay you know he's a sales associate oh, yeah, um yeah. Shout out Goo. That was his name. Goo? Goo. I don't Fire. Know, uh, an Asian fellow. Okay. And, gas. Um, Goo is gas. <laughs> so I sit down with Bro. Goo, and I'm like, I know you have my notes, and I show him a picture from the website. I'm like, just to be clear, I need this exact bracelet. It's a bracelet. Okay. And I'm not going to say the brand, because I don't need anyone fucking this up for me uh, more than I already almost fucked up myself. How they fuck it up for you? By somehow DMing Jen and be like, oh, Lawrence went to redacted or whatever. Not that I think anyone would do that, but I don't know. Okay. All right. I don't know how many bad actors are out there okay. just looking for an opportunity to steal my bitch. We'll see it on social soon. I'm sure. Like future or Drake. Yeah. yeah. Um, Princess Jenna. <laughs> so I sit down and I'm like, okay, like I'm here because like, you know, and he's like, uh, oh, he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, we don't have any anymore. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what? Did no, one, note, no, no, one thought to, no one thought to hit me up and he, and I go, uh, I'm like, Goo, my note. So I'm like, is there any, Goo? so I'm like, are there any in New York? I thought, Goo. I thought the whole reason Billy, Ma Billy Madison. Okay. Film. Um, That's a film. <laughs> thought the, you see they're doing happy Gilmore too. Oh, bro. <sighs> there's new, been a lot of like uh, new IP, please. There's been, Oh, there's another really bad IP rehash. Are we going to talk roadhouse later? Are we yeah, going to get yeah, to it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let yeah. me wrap this up. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 keep going. Cause keep it going. does have a good, cause it does have a happy ending. Thank God. Spoiler. Thank you. So I'm like, I'm like, wait, <laughs> no one thought to let me know. Like I'm here to acquire. I'm not yeah, here. But you to... don't matter, bro. You're a first time purchaser, right? <laughs> I am. Un unlike some other, um, the, like unlike Cartier where like I have an account, like maybe there would be more flexibility, but anyway, I'm like, all right. I'm like, so are there any in New York at another boutique that could like be shipped? And he's like, yeah, unfortunately, not, not right now. And I'm like, why did nobody tell? Like, You're killing me, Goo. You have so many ways of getting in touch with me. And, and as a brand of this caliber, I would, I was like already like where I can't believe the customer service has lacked already. And yeah. now is like not, is not, I'm like, well, this is terrible. Especially when you're part of the Goo crew. <laughs> 
<laughs> gooped up, dude. Goop on your Grinch, dude. Um, great fucking tweet. Anyway, so I'm like, all right, dude. I'm like, uh, is there any chances I can play? He's like, well, if you want to now get on the uh, the paid wait list, and I'm like, fuck. I'm like, all right, so well, annoying. I'm like, and I, I don't. I have so you to- have to pay. Not knowing when you would receive well, then what I'm you like, pay for. I'm like, okay, I got plan B's, but this was like, this is the, this is what I want to get. It's like, this is exactly what I want to get her. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, like, how long could that take? He's like, well, the thing that you want, he's like, it could be a couple weeks. He's like, and we'll just messenger to you as soon as it uh, uh, comes to the store. And I'm like, a couple weeks. I'm like, all right, dude. Like again, you had it's in the note. Like I had this very specific deadline. I'm like, what's like the longest it could take? He's like, yeah, most like a month. And I'm like, bro, I'm like. I'm like, well, is there any chance that? And he's like, yeah, and it might come. He's like, you know, we get new shipments. He's like, it might be the P, it might be here. I'm like, bro. So I'm like, work I, with me, go. So I'm like, fuck. And it's not even a deposit to get, you got to just buy the thing. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, if I just shell out for this thing, I'm like, I, I get a plan B, then I'm like in the whole like double what I then thought you I was going to spend. Ten, then you save up for 10 years <sighs> or you have a gift for 10 years. So I'm sitting there, I'm fucking sweating bullets and I'm like, uh, I guess. I'm like, I, I think I really want this thing. I'm gonna roll the dice. He goes, you know, honestly, he's like, there might. Then he suddenly, he's like, well, and the wallet is out now on the table. Oh, so he just needed okay. No, All right, I no, see what he's but, doing but here. no, because it wasn't like a tactic I'm fucking with. Me. I was very clear that I wanted this thing. I just needed it by Friday night. Yeah, but you still hadn't pulled out the plastic until this very moment. And he's doing that thing where it's like, you know, back in the day with um. You know, you go to the ticket counter at the airport and they're like, you know, going like <laughs> working their telex machine. And I'm like, I'm like, and he's like, actually, he's like, you know what? There might have been, I think there might have been a shipment. I'm like, let me go and look. So I'm like, and this is by the way, he'd already went into the back and was like, no, we don't have it. And I'm mm. like, so now he's like, let me just check in the basement. Comes about the basement. Oh, he's got it. I'm like, what the? He's like, you want this gift wrapped? I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> yes, goo. And then the final point after all this bullshit, and yeah, maybe I'm being not fucked with, but like, I don't know, they're, they want to make sure that I'm, I'm about that life, because maybe of how I look, I'm being profiled as a bum. Yeah, you pulled up in the streetwear car- cardigan. Uh, then I go, okay. You go. came to the Cardi party. So now I'm like relieved. He's like, you want to... Trying to buy a gift for your shouty. He's like, you want a gift box the whole day? I'm like, yes, please, whatever. He's like, um... Uh, and I go, oh, real quick. I'm like, I already know the size that I want to get it adjusted to. I'm like, can we just do that now? But And he's like, no. You got to come back and do it in person. And I'm like... Like with the recipient. <sighs> Or yeah. with the owner. Because I was like, or not even that, because like it could have been for me, right? I mean, he knew that it wasn't, but like I don't even think it's that. It's just like they wouldn't adjust. I was like, I said, I said, I know the size, right? The standard is seven. I got I need this to be six and a quarter inches. He's like, no, I can't do it. You'll have to come back. I don't understand. Is it, I mean, <sighs> is it a tactic just to get you in the store again so that you like buy more later Maybe. on? Is it like I have no fucking idea? And you know, I told you know the brand we're talking about. I expected more. Or is it a thing where I shouldn't be shocked because this is how luxury brands operate which is just fucking straight up a cruising altitude of bullshit yeah probably that (laughs) anyway i left with the bag i got the fucking piece it is beautiful they wrapped it up nice oh and then this i hate this shit where it's like despite this whole rigmarole and all this nonsense oh here's a we got some custom chocolates for you any nut allergies Mm. um and I'm like, I, I, keep all that, or, or you get, get the any, complimentary fragrance, or can we get you water or champagne, bro? Adjust the fucking bracelet. Did you for get my any wife. champagne ahead of time, or like nah, an espresso asked, or anything? They asked if I wanted anything, and I was like, Nah, I'm good. I got, no, it's 11 a.m. Well, I got, and I got, got to work. Right, espresso. No, I already had two that morning, mm. and I'm like, I got my own water. I'm, I'm like, just yeah. find the fucking yeah. bracelet, guys. Just give me the goddamn ooh. But like, ultimately, it's it, everything worked out. I know she's gonna fucking love it, uh, mainly because she picked it out. I know. Thank God for goo, because now on your anniversary, you yourself can goo um, <laughs> in your wife. In and July, I know that <laughs> you had Plan Bs because you and your beautiful bride have a system that. I <laughs> cast dispersions upon because I think it just dispersions. Is that, a, what is that, is that the word? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Um, your system, I, I, <laughs> I find it it's helpful. Yeah, but it takes all the romance out of gift giving, which I love giving gifts, and I love yeah. the uh, the moment of giving a gift and the receiver being like, "Holy shit!" Like, yeah, I love this. Um, with you know surprise or maybe like some sort of hint of like like the last big gift I I gave someone to my ex was like I knew she needed a bag um of a certain size and I got a bag shout out Greg shout out Gregory is a gentrifier he helped me out with a bag from the row nice um and it was it, I crushed it it was like above and beyond it was like you know best gift 
blah, blah, blah. Do you have any idea if she still uses it or if it's like a, I a, have tra- no idea. a, like a traumatic thing because it was from you? I have no idea. Mm. Um, it'd be pretty silly if she didn't use it because it was a very, it's a very nice bag. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, it's the row, should, I, should I ask for it back? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Honestly, right? Yo, did you see? Oh my God, bro. Did you see? We're going to talk TV in a second. Did you see Carl uh, justifying why he asked for the engagement ring back? Oh, well, hold on. I actually, who broke off? So he broke off the engagement. It doesn't matter. Uh, okay, I disagree. Was no, no, it, no. Is it a family heirloom? Here he's citing the law. He was on a Watch What Happens Live with you know. Andy I thought Cole. the law is uh, nine tenths of it is the possession. The <laughs> law in New York State, and he's citing the law, and people like the crowd is like booing, yeah, I'm and sure. like the other guests like Carl, come on, you can't. And Andy's like Carl, and Carl's like it's. I'm just stating the law <laughs> that in New York City or New York State, if uh, you buy an engagement ring and the engagement the either party doesn't follow through, or the party doesn't follow through the engagement, it is my ring. And he's, so it's like, that's why I'm asking for probably spent a lot of money. Bro. Also, he doesn't have a job. Yeah, so a like, point. <laughs> yeah, he needs, he needs to take that to fucking the pawn shop. Dude. He needs to pawn that off for a fucking big old bag of yip. If it's, <laughs> if it's an heirloom, family heirloom, you got to get it back. That I okay. think plays. Fair. And then my thing is that, and I forget what's happening, what happened to them specifically. And I hope you see it on TV, but if she breaks off the engage or the, if you propose and the per- the proposee uh, is the one who breaks it off, then I think you should get it back. Okay. Um, you don't get to have your cake and eat it too. And wear it too. You don't get to have your cake and wear it too. You don't get to have your cake and eat your wedding cake. Uh, but you and you and your wife have a oh, system yeah. that makes the gift giving portion of your relationship very This easy. is, to be clear, this, easy? Is, this is just easy breezy, beautiful. Dreezy girl. So this is definitely just a her thing. I don't have a similar uh, doc, which I'll explain, but there has okay. been some precedents in our relationship that led up to this moment. One is uh, before we got engaged, speaking of engagement ranks, I had an email chain from her, uh, a four year consideration where as her tastes, uh, as her taste developed in engagement rings, she would update me on you know, whenever this is going to fucking happen, by the way, and you're on borrowed time, oh, the ring. this is what I want for my engagement ring. Okay. Just um, like notes, like specs, like so, gold, uh, D- princess cut, like that shit. Like, yeah, like, like uh, she wanted a solitaire, this type of band, whatever. Right. All right. So that that was already That's established. Fine. They're very helpful. That's fairly common. And and weigh in. Maybe I'm in the fucking uh, minority here. Yeah. So uh, you know where it's like again. I guess it's gift giving or gift receiving is a part of your love languages. And it is one of her love languages uh, to receive. Yes. As a beautiful brat. Uh, and then I, uh, that, uh, you know, as we uh, started getting gifts after we were married, I was key. I used to keep a running note oh, of gifts for JB of, course. of things that were mentioned. Of course. For whatever reason, I guess she, or if it, or it's even like, Oh, she's like, uh, you know, whatever, like, be- Really needs a bag type shit, right? Yeah. And then you just like keep links. So and you consult like you, you got to consult with the friends. Of course, with the and homies. I have done that before. Yeah. Uh, somewhere along the line, that you fucked up note, so bad. No, no, that notes app evolved into now. I am on a shared spreadsheet with my wife of <laughs> gifts for JB, where she literally like there is a column for the link. There is a column for a note, like if it needs to be monogrammed, what the monogram should be. There is now a price tab, which to me was like, I, do we need the price tab? That was I think I mentioned that as a joke, and there now is a price tab so that you can. Price sort high to low. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. Not in this case. Um, well, well, you don't, don't want to go low to high. But I don't want to, but I don't want to be gauche and talk money. Um, you, you don't want to go low to high with this. And, and to be clear, this doesn't exist for me. I don't, I, I'm a very, we've talked about this before. I'm a hard person to buy stuff for because we get a lot of stuff for free, not trying to flex, just being real facts or facts. And then when it comes to a ridiculous purchase, like a pair of stingray uh, loafers from the row, um, speaking of the row, like I don't expect anyone to ever buy that for me and would never be audacious enough to ask for it. I would just buy that myself. So for her, this is the system for us. This is the system. And honestly, like uh, my personal shopping experience with this luxury brand aside, like I don't know if I would have thought to get this particular bracelet. So it kind of worked out. And it's and these are things that she is not I know, buying I know, for I know, herself, I right? I, I, I get the pros where it's like, you're never going to miss. Like, she gets what she wants. To me, it just takes, and maybe yes. I'm just a fucking no. old-fashioned romantic no, here. No, you're not but wrong. But it feels like it takes the magic out of the, hey, here's the, because th- like, a great gift, it really is the thought that doesn't only count, but like, the th- 
when it's clear that a lot of thought went into it, where it's like, hey, like I, you know, yeah. solved your fucking Rubik's cube of desire <laughs> and got you the thing that you actually like. I found the clitoris of gift giving. I was gonna say that. Um, it's like this that, 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 that's, such a, that's, that's like, such a special moment. Um, I'm choosing from uh, like there's how many know. links are on here. <sighs> well, I just got one off the board. Uh, <laughs> Do you highlight in red when you acquired? <laughs> <laughs> and she like goes in. It's a spoiled. No, I guess there maybe there's probably like a dozen. I would say, okay. and this is a living doc, so it's gonna it only increases uh, with time. Leak the doc. Bro. Uh, what I would say is you're you're absolutely. Which, Correct. That's, that, and I'm not saying that what you're no, no. doing is wrong. I'm just saying that if you're not criticizing me, this is a if my partner reaction. did that. I would I would be a little like, oh, come on. Like, uh, mm, you're just telling me like what to buy for you versus the, giving a gift for us and all couples function differently. Yep. The thoughtfulness and the romance is the next part of any birthday Ooh, the oral or sex. holiday, the goo or anniversary. <laughs> no, it's not goo related. Um, come on. It's a different type of goo. And that would be the goo from a pen, AK ink. It is the thoughtful, beautiful handwritten um, gesture portion of the gift that is where I think the thought and the romance and all that comes into play. And while we might exchange gifts tonight, for example, the cards are for when we go and have drinks before we have dinner and get all dressed up and you know hit the town uh, nice. on our actual anniversary, which will be Saturday. So that that would be my one thing is that th that element is I'm not saying at the store, hey, by the way, uh, uh, give me a, a card. This is happy anniversary. I love Lawrence, right? <laughs> like. That's that's where um here you go, bitch. As, Take it off the board. As a very thoughtful and sensitive guy who also happens to be a published author, I relish in the opportunity to really let the let the fucking ink speak for itself. Yeah, baby. Let the pen fly. Yeah. All right. Well, so that's what that's uh what happened for my anniversary. Or that's where we're at right now in the current anniversary. Got it. I'm glad you trials, got trials and tribulations. I'm glad you got the number one trap pick. Yeah, um, thank God. And you can take one off the board, bro. If I was bro, if I had to drop X amount not knowing like this could have been a, like a month out delivery and then having to like drop another bag. I would have been a livid bro. Yeah. You would have seen throwing fit start uh, doing a lot of cameos. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, doing a lot of cameos, Jax oh, yeah. Taylor back <laughs> the in the back. motherfucking the bastards back. zeitgeist. Uh, and speaking of romance, cause nothing but romance in Jax and Brittany's life. Yeah. Um, all right, real quick, let's get on our Bravo boy shit. We talked about Carl and Lindsay a little bit. We have been watching, Vanderpump this year and while last season was obviously peaked with Scandaval Untouchable. and I thought it was kind of dark in and of itself mm -hmm. which is like the whole season um, in like a good way and then Scandaval just uh, absolute cherry on top this season has been absolute fucking ass it is just snoozer 40 something a sober adults Ugh. speaking therapy terms to one another it's really fucking give bad. me the grace for my toxicity, because I need the boundaries, blah, 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 blah. I am matriculating through my trauma, and I need you to respect my boundaries as a friend. Thank Type shit. fucking God. <laughs> we got the Nagas, the fat man and little boy, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. <laughs> I can say that. In the form of Jax Taylor um, joining the boys at where, where, where was that? A steakhouse? Where were they? No, no, no that, was, like a, that was the oh, earlier. West, West, they were just getting bites in a West Hollywood fucking bistro. Um, the big, the big fucking tease into yeah, his and just lobbing show. bombs Bro. as it's as a lead in to the f premiere of the Valley uh, last week. Yeah, so we're, we got one episode in the can. What are your thoughts so far? So if you hadn't thrown it down on the run of show, I don't know if even though that lead in was awesome, because literally this guy that, you know, you haven't seen on Bravo in, in a minute, literally just comes in so hot, who knows exactly what he's doing and why he's going to do it. And yes, that does make for good TV. I plugged into the valley per your recommendation and the fact that you are seemingly bullish on it. I have high hopes for it. You have, or that you have high hopes. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sold just yet, bro. This show, I thought it sucked so bad mm. that even you hate kids. You know what? It, you know what it is. And speaking of like uh, being a husband and gift giving and thoughtfulness, I'm watching it with JB, and this shit, the Valley, is like the Olympics of bad husbands. That I was like, yeah. maybe I should watch this with her because I'm like calling out shitty behavior, and she's like, hmm, 
Mm, my guys, I got a good one. And I'm like, yeah, like Call these- behavior. Uh, yeah, that guy cheated on her. Wow. My babe really knows how to fucking how many it's like how many couples and like and only two of the husbands are good guys. I think it's like four couples. Yeah. And uh, so they're shooting 50 percent of the field in terms the, of when you marry a monster. Yes. Well, Dodie's not married to the guy. Oh, the wait, but she's Colorado a monster. Whatever. She's the yeah. she's the bad one. So what the valley proved to me mm -hmm. the first episode, and it seems like we're going to get even more of this, is that Jax Taylor fucking carried Vanderpump and despite the Vanderpump apologists such as like for example myself that have been sticking around ever since he got booted from the show he was canceled for being racist left, right I believe so yeah. yeah Um, this man is built for reality television that's a fact and thank god <laughs> that we finally have pieces of shit getting drunk <laughs> getting like, all these guys are getting hammered dude everyone on, on Vanderpump is sober yeah. right except for Tom Schwartz and Brock yeah. Everyone else is just like, oh, yes, Pellegrino. Oh, oh no. Or they're Cali sober or whatever. Oh, actually, I'm no less of a Pellegrino guy. I'm more of a Mountain Valley. Like, shut the fuck up. If I want to hear people talk about bottled water, I'll turn into a podcast. I'll tune into a podcast <laughs> that no one else listens to. All right. Thank God that we finally have monstrous narcissists getting fucking hammered yeah. and treating their spouses, their friends, their children, their family like absolute shit. Because this is entertainment, folks. And this is what we need. Well, that's to, entertainment. I mean, we have summer. Summer House is fucking humming along. I love it. I really think that um, Southern Hospitality, which is uh, kind of a mm -hmm. spinoff I don't of watch Southern that, Charm. I've heard. Very, very good. Southern Charm, also great season. Was it? I really enjoyed it. I'm trying to think, JT, yeah, it was pretty good. Bringing oh, JT oh, yeah. into the mix, and I mean, Austin we, just doubling down on being a douche. We didn't have convicted. We didn't have convicted rapist state senators anymore. No, like yo, remember his ex girl, uh, Ravenel? Yeah, not Catherine, but the other bitch, Ashley. Remember her? No. What a fucking psychotic hurricane that was. <laughs> yeah. Um. But again, it's like it's it's giving <laughs> like slight hints of uh you know classic just unhinged bravo yeah so i'm excited for that and i think that Jax knows what he's doing he is definitely back on the schneef he is <laughs> definitely cheating on britney um yeah, clearly because like he doesn't find her attractive anymore because he's he's obviously back in it he's yep. opening a bar he has a, a fucking sports bar Jax sports bar. he's a midlife he has a midlife crisis car yeah um and be, being back on it's TV, a Corvette Stingray, bro, having the clout back again, like he, you know, he's fucking like, uh, I don't know. Here's the whip from Boogie Nights that yeah. <laughs> that Turk Diggler gets himself. To. You know, he's fucking IG thoughts in the valley, which is like, I think, still the capital porn. I don't know. So to your point about, I have high hopes for it. I'm not fully about, sold yet, right? But why the but show? I think, could I, think be the, good. I think the combustible ingredients are there. There's that other guy, the real piece of shit that treats his wife, the real like, estate agent. Yeah, he's terrible, bro. He's just like. Uh, oh yeah, I never, I never raised my son, and I start drinking at 11 a.m. every day. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm hitting on other chicks. This is a lot of my mistress. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, my, my side, side piece. piece. <laughs> All right. So here's my issue with this douchebag behavior turned up to 13. Yes, it does make for entertaining television, but um, there's part of me, and we've said this before, and I don't want to like get on my uh, New Yorker know me fry shit because I'm not smart. I'm actually a dumbass. But I'm Fair. watching this show, and I'm like, at what point? Do reality TV stars, and this has happened with a lot of housewives, they get too self-aware where the name The Valley is actually so apropos because it feels like an uncanny valley situation where I know I'm not watching reality and it not skeezes me out because like of course I can find entertainment and watch watching douchebags purge themselves on television fucking week in and week out. But I'm just like, this is clearly fake and these are clearly fake people and they're trying so hard that like at what point is it like almost like a three like a 180 thing yeah. and i'm not i am no longer entertained because there is no semblance of reality hence the uncanny valley that's or, a good point. or just the semblance of it that's a good point i think that and that's why i really like southern hospitality and why like early seasons of reality shows yes, go sir. so much harder because yep. like love whether it's love island mm -hmm. vanderpump southern charm they are not yet and and also now like the reality TV cottage industry, people go on reality TV to become famous. Britney kind right? of joined Vanderpump, like, and I, I don't know what's happening with their separation. And yes, she married a monster. She is one of these people where she kind of came in at a stage in Vanderpump where like she knew that if she could date one of these guys and get on the show, clout points would go up from uh, get a free boob job. Yeah, 
and facelift. Get a free facelift or neck neck lipo, which honestly, yo, sign me up. I I was like, yo, tell me more about the neck lipo recovery process. But look, even if people are, but she, but she's kind of one of those people too. And yeah, I, that's why, and, yeah. and even if these people, like, there's a failed actor or a, or washed up actor, or washed up beauty pageant from girl. like Nickelodeon shows. Yeah, I wonder uh, if he's in that fucking documentary. Huh. Good God! But him on uh, Fifty for the Bozo, Dan. Are you, watch, are you watching that shit? No, I don't even know what it is or where is it. It's on I, HBO. It's on Nickelodeon. Or it's on Max. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just so dep- it's like yeah I, uh, slime these fucking kids get a like, little fucking uh, money shot of fucking goo yeah get the goo <laughs> shot it's like here's Amanda Bynes like oh, two weeks shit. after she got an abortion at the age of 13 from Jesus this guy I don't fucking know Christ, like, I don't know if I want to watch that I'd rather not, just watch Tajiki Terrors get tortured to death on Twitter yeah um, that's real fucking reality TV yeah. Jesus fucking God, Christ damn. car battery to the fucking goo tub <laughs> that man ain't gooing no more oh no he going out his ass uh, let's talk about something else we both watched over the weekend because it was a fucking shitty day out. Yeah. Um, which I guess is never reason for you to watch no. a, hours of TV, but uh, I'm Roadhouse. Like, I'm like the postman, bro. When it comes to cinema, I always deliver I'm rain, cinema. sleet, snow, shine. I'm S- tapped in. I'm locked in on you're, that fucking sofa. You're the baby. Carl Malone of watching TV in that you no, he's also- watch young people get diddled <laughs> on your television, I guess, apparently. Just stop. <laughs> no. I don't watch child porn. Don't clip that out. Okay. Um, Roadhouse <laughs> with our boy. J- Are you a Jake fan? You uh, like Jake I Jill, love right? Nightcrawler, and outside of that, Jarhead. Jarhead's pretty good. Donnie Darko. Uh, Donnie Darko. I actually Southpaw. Definitely. Uh, no, he loves being in movies to where he has an excuse to take steroids and get extra jacked. Yeah, I've learned that. Uh, no, my favorite uh, Jill and Hall's Nightcrawler. I think is spectacular. Yeah. Pretty good. Zodiac Killer? Zodiac Killer. Oh, Zodiac is great. Yeah, Zodiac. Um, Shadow Fincher. And then, yes, I rewatched Darko recently, and I'm like, damn, this really does hold up. Speaking of- Remember uh, when I was like all in on Donnie Darko core for a second there? Well, what does that mean? I don't like, know. Like, goth? I was like, oh, Donnie Darko. But speaking back of Donnie Darko, Hall and Schwazy. So we're talking Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Uh, yeah, I thought this movie was really stupid, but kind of fun. But like, I don't know. I wish it was more violent. I thought there was going oh, really? to be more fighting. And you had never- I have not seen the OG, right. so I read a review that was like, it pays a lot of homage, yes. there's a lot of references, it's a lot of fun to kind of like, you know, spot the Easter eggs. Yeah. Um, Donnie Darko, rabbit, funny reference. Mm-hmm. Um, Conor McGregor fucking, speaking of yipped out, my goodness. I, like, I just, I don't know, I mean, th- that man is, uh, shout out Freddie Gibbs, half man, half cocaine at this point. Like- <laughs> And and he's so and he's earned it. He's earned it. He's like he like went into that yipped out. I mean, definitely yipped out. Uh, also, my thing was like if if anyone's trying to like drug test him or whatever, just be like, yo, it was method acting. That was my letterbox joke. I'm like, you could literally write off all the coke, being like, yo, I'm just taking this acting uh, part of my career. So seriously, I'm just method acting. Yeah, and you can't bring Conor McGregor to the Florida Keys without ex- <laughs> expecting him not to fucking put a key up his nose. True, right? put the keys in Florida Keys. Yeah, god damn, he must do great shit too. No wonder he's all fucking unhinged and out of control. Well. If you're doing coke that makes you fucking spaz out, you saw this? I like, think that's a, a quantity, not a quality issue. Oh, okay. Just, okay. No, that's what I was going Thanks, with. Thanks, Doc. Uh, the <laughs> Thank ori- you, Dr. Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call me, dude. Um, Dr. Feel Good. You ever see uh, the, you ever watch the show? Oh, you don't watch TV. You ever watch the, the, the cartoon Metalocalypse? No. Pretty I've good. never I even think heard of that. It was um, Adult Swim. Oh. It was like. 2008, 9, 10. I don't know. Uh, it's a, the main character is like a Norwegian death metal band. Sick. But there's a, there's a Dr. Feelgood um, character. His name is that where he's basically a parody of, uh, of um, Sammy Hagar. Oh, okay. Right. So it was, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a right up my alley, this show. Yeah, exactly. Um, the original Roadhouse. Yes. Is definitely better because it's just. I want to watch it. It's so much more zooted out, and like Sam Elliott looks incredible. Is so many handsome guys at the peak of their fucking swag. Obviously, shout out Swayze, R.I.P. A dead bitch. I heard it got the- buried because it was like it got put out in summer '89, which is like a big year for movies. Probably, like, I'm sure. I'm Batman. Sure. Oh yeah, Lethal Weapon. Damn. Yeah, big year. Um, but it's a great movie. It's so fun. It's so dumb. It, it, it has the self-awareness of knowing it's a B-movie. And that's why I found the Roadhouse remake or whatever this is to be like true to the original where like the, the everyone and it's dumb and it's stupid and it's not going to scratch any intellectual itch. And but it was not it was almost not dumb enough. I wanted uh, to get I wanted to get more like 
I, I thought it was know, pretty more fighting. fucking stupid. More fighting. I mean, the M- McGregor literally being like, he was too stupid. This is my Joker moment. Speaking yeah. of Joker. Oh, uh, you fucking taught I was not going <laughs> to be here. Dance-y. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't know. Um, yo, I, 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 the but director I did a, a Bourne movie and Edge of Tomorrow. Two Ooh. flicks with fire action where this action was a little hey. like punch, 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 punch. Oh, UFC move. Like, all right, whatever. Yeah. I mean, obviously the, the UFC um, influences, I mean, forget about even just casting Yo, post McGregor, blown like, with his fucking a cups fucking swinging like on some, on a snatch shit. I was I, like, I was like, when did they film this? Because he looks so much better now. It was on his epic. Oh, that has okay. got to be real. Well, probably right. Well, yeah. he's kind of, but it's Ozempic. I can see like with me where the weight I've lost, I'm still like a sloppy, gross piece of shit. He like looks pretty like good. I wonder if he's like doing like weights or if he's like, maybe doing fucking, you know, UFC style maybe he's training. on like Conor uh ski lift. I also thought that post was way more involved and not just like this one scene because of how much promo. I mean, Amazon is paying all these guys out the ass for yeah, sure. Come on. But I think knowing the, the movie, knowing its source material and like, uh, you know, winking to it, I, I thought was fun and i think i think the og is better um but i think both are very solid movies and yeah. i enjoyed my time watching both i did a little leonardo dicaprio pointing at the tv when uh the gay roommate from broad city shows oh, up as, as one of the thugs and he's such a goofball. And he's, pretty, and he's pretty he's pretty good he's I, really funny i didn't know he's gonna ha- like i first when i first see him and he's not talking I'm like Ugh, like oh, yeah. what a fucking miscast but then he actually does have like a pretty prominent comedic relief role. Also, I don't know if you caught uh, Jakey wearing the, honestly, another former grail of mine that I never got my hands on. Had I got my hands on it, I probably would have offloaded it at this point or kept mm-hmm. it around for when the uh, desire to wear it swung back around again. A $450 capital um, shirt. Oh, really? Capital. The, like, the Hawaiian shirt? It's Hawaiian, but it's like super floral. kind of has like a mountain scene on it. It has like a, I think John Mayer has it. <laughs> Um, it's blue, has a camp collar, uh, I think like a raglan sleeve. It's like has purple across the chest. Like it's like a Japanese kind of like woodblock print scene. Speaking of John, you May, absolutely know what I'm talking about. Speaking of John, May, well, one, and, and I think Joan Hall looks really good in real life. Like, during, you know, he has a great stylist. Uh, I thought he, the character was, did not have Swayze level swag. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly. Like if this looked like shit in the movie is like, that's why I probably didn't even clock it. You bringing up mayor made me remember, um, look at that. Beautiful. Sheena. On the most recent episode oh, yeah. of Vanderpump Rules, talking about being in an or- a John Mayer orgy, which apparently she's been um, spitting that uh, connection since 2009. Because that's like her only bar. So no, like she's, she's like interviewed on some like third rate gossip show, being like, "We're here with Sheena, a hostess said who fucked John Mayer," <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah, I don't know if we're dating, but like me and John oh definitely have a connection. Yeah, a connection with you and nine other fucking hoes at the yeah. Chateau Marmont." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hey, Sheena, you're not the only one getting the mayor goo. All right. This has been another episode of The Only Podcast That Matters. Um, I'm glad that we were able to move past the terrible, terrible podcast. I actually hadn't thought week. about it once we like once cooler heads prevail and we're like, yep, this is never coming out. Uh, we're done. We're not even trying to make this guy look bad. These are just the facts. And then with this afters, bro, I'm, I'm going to really tap in. Well, if it's bad, if it's bad, it's bad. But I'm going to redact the fuck out of All it. All right. Sure. Because we, I don't even want to talk about brands he's worked with because it would be too easy to yeah. figure it out. And then I don't want to fucking start some like the whack gargle my ball son type shit, the Neve type shit. That's one thing. This is, uh, I don't need, this, this is, is a whole different weird. fucking weird vibe. But whatever. Bro. We never have to talk about it again until yep. Friday. All right, chef, take us out. Bye, guys. <laughs>